All right, I'd like to call to order this Thursday, October 7th, 2021, meeting the Springfield Historical Commission. Um, and let me just go over the, some of the, the uh, COVID issues here. In order to enable municipal government to continue its important work during COVID-19 pandemic, while assuring both city employees and citizens can satisfy CDC social distancing guidelines, the city of Springfield is providing public notice that will conduct public hearings utilizing remote technology. Copies of said petitions, text, and maps may be requested by email or phone. Email should be directed to the Office of Planning and Economic Development at A-A-L-L-E-N at springfieldcityhall.com or by calling 413-787-6020. To view the public hearing, it is played or replayed on Focus Community TV website. Uh, public comment will be taken two segments. The first public comment period will take place prior to the meeting discussion. The second public comment period will take place after the meeting will remain open for 24 hours after the meeting. To provide for public comment and writing, mail Springfield Store Commission 70 Tapley Street in Springfield, 01104, or email A-A-L-L-E-N, that's A Allen at springfieldcityhall.com. To provide for public comment by voicemail, the number is 413-750-3223. Messages received will be played at the Historical Commission hearing or at the continued hearing date. All commenters should state their name, address, and company or organizational affiliation in addition to the items their comments pertain to. Voice messages received 24 hours before the hearing will be put into the record during the public hearing, and comments after will be entered at the continued date for the hearing. Uh, voice messages are limited to two minutes. Request a reasonable accommodation or language services. Please call 413-787-6020. Okay, the first one agenda. Okay, the first on the agenda is uh, an application for certificate of appropriateness, uh, 32 Temple Street, uh, installation of interconnected rooftop solar system with black on black panels, electrical equipment mounted on the rear left side of the home, panels located on the rear of the home, not visible to public view. Uh, is there anything, who's speaking for this? Is this uh, Stephen? This is Steve. Yeah. Has there been any changes or any anything or is everything still the same as our original hearing? No, I believe everything is still the same. Okay. Do any commissioners there have were questions? No, I'm sorry, there were no requests for anything. We're just gonna do our best to hide the, hide the equipment and typical okay. historic application. Okay, this is just says the panels located on the rear of home, not visible, well, minimally visible public view. It says in, uh, not visible, but I, I believe that minimally is, would be more appropriate or accurate. Um, any commissioners have any questions? No? Um, hearing none, I would entertain a motion to accept the application for a certificate of appropriateness at uh, 32 Temple Street for the installation of interconnected rooftop solar system as presented so move okay is there a second second okay any, second. Discussion, any discussion on that motion i just want to state that we don't have any public comments for this particular matter okay right. perfect thank you very much all right i'll call the vote uh, commissioner finn yes commissioner crow crow sorry yes <laughs> commissioner McFarland. yes thank you uh commissioner duquette Yes. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. And Commissioner Walsh is yes. Okay, you're, you're all set. Very good, thank you. Okay. You have a good thank evening, you. stay safe. You too. Thank you. An application for a certificate of hardship to reside nine dormers with vinyl siding to match house siding, clapper style, and, and cupola on the carriage house. To, uh, the hardship is that uh, it's too high to paint, too dangerous climbing the ladder. Uh, six dormers on the main structure and three dormers on the carriage house. Uh, are, the, are the people here for this or did they, are they on the call? 
Yeah, I don't believe they're on the call, Commissioner Walsh. Um, but the property, Linda Craven? the property owner uh, did indicate to me that uh, it's, it seemed as though the commission was not in favor. So he decided that he was going to withdraw his application. However, he did not uh, submit a letter um, stating so. So that's why it's still on the agenda. Okay. So I, what I'm going to do is, uh, is, do you think there's any chance they're going to join our call or no? I don't believe so. Okay. Then I'd entertain a motion to accept the application for a certificate of hardship at 96 Sumner Avenue uh, to reside dormers with vinyl siding to match uh, house siding. Uh, is there a motion? I would like to move that uh, that we accept the motion with the hopes that it does not pass. Okay, that would be in discussion. Is there a second on that? A second. Second. Okay. So it's an, a motion to accept the application for certificate of hardship. I'm going to start the vote. I'll call it. Is there any discussion on it? In your opinion, your, your Alphonse, you believe it should not be passed. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then I'll start the vote. Uh, Commissioner Walsh votes no. Commissioner Nardi? No. Commissioner Duquette? No. Commissioner McFarland? No. Commissioner Kroll? No. And Commissioner Finn? No. Okay. All right. And we had to take a procedural vote there, uh, Commissioner Kroll, just because. They didn't officially withdraw it, so we had to have a motion and just do it. I figured you know that already, but just so in case you're wondering. No, if they, thank you. if they had withdrawn it, we would have just, it would have been gone. Okay. Mr. Walsh, um, if you could just give, a, a, or anyone who has knowledge of um, from the previous meeting, um, just the, the reasons why it's, it's being uh, declined. Well, it's, vinyl is not an appropriate replacement. If, and in my opinion, like I voiced at the original meeting, if they're able to go up and do the vinyl, they're able to go up and paint it. Um, it's not hardship. I don't, it doesn't fall under hardship and or appropriateness for historic property. So there wasn't an appropriate uh, justification for a hardship. That's correct. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody Can else want to add to that? We had the same situation with my house. We wanted to do vinyl siding and um, we just had the guy paint it. And my, my house is in a historic district. Um, and you did, and you painted it. <laughs> we painted instead. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's just, doable. Can I make a comment? Yes. Just for everyone's information, as an architect, I can tell you vinyl is not good for the older houses because it was the wall structure was not designed to do that. What happens is the moisture goes through and gets trapped in the wall because it can't come out. And yeah. then your wall starts deteriorating. So it's really a very bad idea. Yeah, I have heard some of that. Okay. Um, yeah. Next we time. heard that too because we have horsehair plaster on the. Oh, the there you house. go. So it wasn't it wasn't uh, a good idea. Okay. We have two new hearings now. For those new hearings, we don't take votes on those tonight. If you're here for a new hearing, because we need to continue them to allow for uh, public commentary. So these will not be voted on. We'll just have you present your uh, application. So 34 Piney Woods. There's an application for a certificate of appropriateness, installation of a new electric meter socket on the left side of the house, and possible replacement of existing front sidewalks. Okay, who's here? Uh, this is, uh, I saw the name here. David, Hi, uh, go ahead. Tell yeah. us what you're doing. Hi, everyone. Um, so what I wanted to do is do a uh, service change to the house. Uh, you know, existing 100 amp panel uh, fed underground. Um, it needs to be upgraded to a 200 amp panel. Uh, it's got the original lead feeders and uh, it's a Federal Pacific panel, as oh, wow. I'm sure you are aware. Uh, they've been out of business for a long, long time. So um, it's just going to be a, a, a just a, a good improvement in general to the house. Um, what I didn't realize was that uh, was that the historic commission had a jurisdiction in this. So, um, so I already mounted the disconnect outside the house. 
um, which you can see in the pictures that I submitted. When I went and looked um, on the application, I saw that I saw that uh, you you did so. So I didn't go any further. Um, I submitted um, uh, for, for approval or for appropriateness. Um, but I but I do believe I, I chose a really good spot. It's um, as you face the house, you really don't see it. Um, I did, um, you know, and we can certainly put a shrub in that corner easy enough to hide it. Um, and then uh, as, as you all are aware, from, I'm sure from past applications, we then have to dig a trench underground um, fortunately, the, uh, the underground vault is pretty close to the front of the house, but I'm going to have to go underneath the front sidewalk. So I don't imagine that the front sidewalk will survive the excavation. It might. Uh, we might be able to tunnel under it, but um, I don't think it's going to survive. So um, I want to include in this application the likely replacement of the walk. Uh, it is my intention to replace the walk exactly like in kind. You know, concrete, yeah. um, the exact same width, length, height, no changes whatsoever. Um, the same exact location and so forth. Um, and um, and then obviously, you know, put put the lawn put the lawn back together. Sure. Um, well, and the that's really the, is, the good news is on the sidewalk. We we really don't have uh, uh, you know, purview over that. You just. If you're replacing it, it's like a repair and replace. That's a non-applicability. So that's the easy okay. part. It's the, the meter location is less clear cut. Um, is that is the electric company telling you that that's where it has to be? Well, that's where the original feed goes in. In that corner of the basement is where the original panel is. So of course, all the wiring in the house all comes to that corner, to that room. Sure. Um, so if it was, if it were in another room, um, it would be a significant um, challenge. But where they really wanted it was right adjacent to the driveway, which would really put it right smack in the middle of everything. It would be horrible. In fact, if if I had to put it there, I. Quite frankly, commissioners, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, I think where we are is really the least possible visible spot. Is that gas a gas meter I'm looking at right behind it? On yeah. The same um, side? You know, the gas company um, did that installation themselves. Yeah. Two or three years ago. Okay. Um, I, I had no idea that they should have gone before you for that. No, well, no, that's a, that's a whole different thing. The, the reason I'm suggesting that is I, I would prefer that if there are two things that could be maybe sh shielded from view to make them minimally visible, they might as well be yeah. in the same place. They might as well right. Be. Well, and, and that was my thinking as well. They're 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 kind of close to each other. So one arborvitae right in the corner there, and they'll disappear. Yeah. Um, any commissioners have any questions for Mr. Rosinski? No. So you're proposing that you would, if if this were approved, the location was approved, that you would make it that that you wouldn't object to us making it a condition having a shrub or something of some planting to make to minimize the visibility. No, not not at all. Okay. Okay, still no other commissioners? Nope, okay. Then just, I a com just a comment. Yeah, I go would ahead. Hope, I would hope whatever is planted is not something that'll try to weasel its way through the brick foundation. So you might want to research that. Yeah. Well, it's funny, it's funny you mentioned that because uh, my, my next door neighbor had some kind, of, uh, some kind of trees that were so aggressive that they actually did bust apart the footing of my porch. Um, which have all been repaired um, many years ago when I rebuilt and recited the whole front of the house, um, right. which, which incidentally did go <laughs> through the historic commission approval process. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, in fact, what I would ask you all to consider is, uh, and I would be, um, I would appreciate your your feedback especially based upon your experience is uh, I'm sure you're all aware. I know there were enough complaints filed about um, about the stockade fence that is now running right along the side of my house. 
um, which I would never have been able to run because it would have been in direct violation um, of the zoning ordinances. But because it is, but because it is my neighbor's backyard, there really isn't much that can be done about it. Um, but um, in terms of an affront to your to your eyes, um, you have to see that to believe it, uh, yeah. because their entire backyard is really my front yard. Um, and so I've got to do something along that side, not just the meter socket will be the least of the things that we try to hide. Yeah. Okay. I get it. I understand that. Um, I, I don't have to see it. I don't have to see it in person to see what it looks like. Um, if there's nothing, anything else to add, anybody, commissioners, anybody? Then I'd entertain a motion to continue the application for a certificate of appropriateness at 34 Piney Woods Avenue to the meeting on the uh, 21st, uh, the October 21st meeting to allow for public commentary. So moved. Second. Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? No, nope. hearing none, we call the vote. Commissioner Nardi. Yes. Commissioner Duquette. Yes. Commissioner McFarland. Yes. Commissioner Kroll. Yes. Commissioner Finn. Yes. And Commissioner Walsh is yes. This is continued to the next meeting to allow for public commentary. Thank you very much, Dave. Thank you, commissioners. Twenty-one twenty. All right, next is, go ahead, who is speaking up? No. The next one is 256 Bay Street. This is an application for certificate of appropriateness, 256 Bay Street installation of 3.4 kilowatt hour solar system with the design attached. Okay. Uh, well, good evening, commissioners. I'm Michael Stevens. I'm the uh, owner of the property. Okay. Go ahead. Feel free to speak and update us on what your and project I'm is. Here, I'm here with Mark McCormick of uh, Trinity Solar, who uh, can uh, present what the di design is. Okay. Let me go on record as saying that uh, I am a, uh, a strong supporter of... Uh, Historic Preservation. I am a member of the Springfield Preservation Trust uh, and uh, a resident of a historic district. And I'm proud to be there. And I uh, uh, and I want to uh, make it uh, clear to the commissioners that uh, I'm uh, this this project well will not go forward if you have if you have any kind of uh, reservations about it. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so I'm looking at I'm looking at the, like the rendering here, but it's not it's not clearly telling me. Unless hold on, let me just turn it a different way. If you want to show me what what page you're on, I can go through it at the well, same. Well, it's time. not that not, not the rooftop. I just don't know which way the house is facing. I'm trying to compare it, the rendering where the panels are going to be. I think there's the panels are going to be on right on the corner of Catherine and Bay, the basically front left quadrant of the house. In the, the corners on the rear, that's not, it, is that not going to be a play, uh, place? No. So th the rest of the house, unfortunately, because of either pitching or shading, mm -hmm. um, it's not viable. Like, not efficient enough? Yeah. So yeah, it just doesn't produce enough. Um, one moment here. Okay. Yeah, let, me, uh, let me just correct, uh, Mark, um, the, the front of the house faces the corner of Bay and Catherine. So the, um, the okay, in this, in this photograph you're seeing here, you don't yep. see, you don't see the part of the roof uh, that's in the project. Right. Okay, uh, that's what I'm trying to determine. Oh. Yep, it's, it's on right. the opposite side. Okay, do I have that picture? Okay, all right. This I got picture, that picture. 
although it's uh yeah it's it's turned but uh this picture has a big arrow pointing to the site yep i got it i got it so this to the right of this of course the picture's turned but i'm looking at it on my my desk here so where the bottom punching into the basement arrow is that's actually pointing towards the street as well that's right okay the street, yeah, the street is, uh, uh, yes, the gable with uh, yellow faces. Yep, is I got you. Okay. So there, uh, in the, the conduit there, what's your proposal for the conduit? We are going to hide um, as much as humanly possible and then paint it to match the color of the house. Okay. So we will have that one strip, uh, which you, I had heard you mentioned going down the same side as the system. And then that'll go directly into the basement. And on the other side is where the uh, meters will be. Is there a current electric meter where, not there now where you're gonna put the other equipment? The current meter is in the basement, I believe. And, and is it being moved out because of this project or no? Yeah, yeah, yes it would. Okay. Any commissioners have any questions? Very quiet. To me. I, them, um, I did have them run a couple different reports, like sun reports, heat signature reports on the roof to see if we could get it more towards the back. Yeah. Um, I, I can see that. I can see that that's, you know, that those roofs aren't, it's the it's the it's the equipment. I'm almost more concerned about the placement of the equipment on the house and how visible it's going to be. Um, you know, we we strive for minimum visibility, either none or minimum visibility. And part of what we're looking for is minimum visibility. Um, right. And you know, like like for the there are, you, you I'm sure you have our guidelines for you know they can't they have to be the same pitches the roof and they can only be yep. so far off the roof and all those things but is there any and this is just an open question i'm not i don't have an idea or a suggestion yet but uh is there because you have it just says a big box and it's you know on top of the car and it makes it look like this equipment's going to be up halfway through up the between the <laughs> two windows um i believe there is a i think it's i think it's five feet for the meter forever source and then the other meter and then the inverter just goes next to that five feet it, it won't be that high it'll be five feet off the ground the top you mean kind of thing i don't i don't know the exact code but that's what that's okay. what i'm pretty sure it is around that anyways you would barely you would barely see the top of it if the car was parked there right right yep okay. exactly and is there anything there on the other side of that car that might be blocking the view or making it less visible? No. Not yet. Probably not no. yet, right? Okay. No, there isn't. Not at this time. Okay. Um, Mr. Stevens, those are the things you just might want to think about for us. Uh, if there's nothing else to add, no other commissioners have any questions? Okay. So... Uh Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Just to no, please, no, jump right in. This is this is what we're here for. Go ahead, Mark. Types of panels that we use. They yeah. are uh, we as a company pride ourselves on the installations, them being neat and looking nice. Mm -hmm. They are the really thin black on black ones, as I heard you mention to the other company earlier. Yep. Um, so they they don't they look nice as well. Okay. Is, yeah. I mean, I know you're you're out there trying. I'm sure you're out there trying to do a good job on these. So yeah, of course. That's not usually a part of the issue, but I'm glad you mentioned it. Uh, the the hard part is some sometimes the 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 design can be better. It can be a better design for the conduit and where it's going to end up. This may be all you have. I'm just saying that's what we're striving for. If there's another, if anything can be done interior that that might be done exterior but could be interior, we prefer that. And just just call it minimum visibility. If there's another way to see it less, that, that's usually what we're after. But I think you've given us enough. Um, you know, we have to, as you know, we have to continue to the 21st in order to allow for public commentary. 
Okay. And um, so right now I would entertain a motion to continue the application for certificate of appropriateness at 256 Bay Street to install a 3.4 kilowatt hour solar system. Anybody? So moved. moved. Thank you. I need a motion and a second. Second. Come to me. All right. And uh, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I'll take the vote. Uh, Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner Finn? Yes. Commissioner Walsh is yes, and Commissioner Nardi. Yes. Okay, so we've continued that to the to the October 21st meeting to allow for public commentary. All right, thank you for presenting that, and that's all set for tonight. Okay, next we have. No, no preservation of historically significant buildings right this minute. We have uh, a section 106 review to 2808 Main Street. Clay tile repair, uh, replace missing damage existing slate roof, repair any failed sealant joints and repair an existing plywood roof hatch with a cover. I don't know if anybody got to look at the at the um, photographs, um, I think they've, they've given us, you know, sufficient uh, pictures. Um, it appears to me, who's here speaking on this? I'm uh, sorry, I'm I'm John Burke, uh, manager of capital projects for PVTA. Thanks. Good John. evening. Good evening. Um, I, it's it appears that that hatchway is not visible from the from a public way, anyways. That's correct. Okay, so if it's not visible at all. Then, then it's not in our purview. Uh, the roof, however, is, but it also sounds like, if I'm reading this correctly, you're, you're repairing a slate roof with slate. Yeah, and it's, it really is just um, um, a very small percentage of um, missing or loose or cracked uh, okay. slate tiles. So we, we have the manufacturer, Vermont Gray, is the, is the product okay. and um, been doing it for years, so. Okay. Uh, now, Alvin, just refresh me what I, what what this motion has to be. Yeah, I just want to clarify uh, because this is not in, within the local district. It's uh, um, yeah, what's uh, it just has no. It's no not detrimental to the. Well, well yes, but no. Uh, but what I'm saying is that regardless of if it's visible or not visible, you guys still have the purview over it. Um, oh, unlike, right. a, unlike a traditional local historic district property. Okay. Um, but in regards to the vote, you guys are basically going to state whether the change is um, an adverse or, 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 or if it's not, or there's no adverse impact to the, uh, to the structure with the change. Okay. So we could, I could, in, I could entertain a motion that there's no adverse. No, no adverse impact to the overall structure due to the change. Just, I'm reading it to say no adverse impact at 2808 Main Street. Um, so I would entertain that motion. So moved. Okay. I'll second. Okay, thank you very much. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, let me just call the roll here. Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner Finn? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. And Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Okay. So, you know, you're all set for that. Thank you, Commissioners. Appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. All right, so one other thing to clarify, um, that again is just a recommendation to MHC. They would have to supply the letter that uh, we, um, that, that you guys produce in regards to the no adverse impact. They would have to supply that to MHC uh, okay. for the uh, overall approval. Okay, so where's that coming from? 
So I'll type that up and I'll have you <laughs> sign it and then uh, we'll, I'll send it to Mr. Burke and uh, Ms. Sheehan. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Okay, you're very welcome. Okay, we have a couple other. Are you going to update us here, Calvin? Is that what's happening next? Yes. Yeah, so, what you call the first item? Macoon Street, 34 Macoon Street. Update us on the fence. Yes. So, I'll show you the photo. Okay. So, you guys can see. This is where the fence once stood. Uh, they have actually removed the fence. In this photo, they actually put the fence down in the, in the <laughs> <I see it. laughs> stairwell going down to the cellar. But the fence, I, I went back out there yesterday. The fence is gone completely. Okay. So I would say that this one has been resolved. All right. So there's not, they're not, they're not, didn't they propose a different fence? They did propose, um, well, let me pull this back up. One second. Okay, my mouse is not working. Give me one second. Okay, here we go. Okay, so you guys can see this fence to the side here. Mm -hmm. The so neighboring they were gonna, property. They were so going to kind of duplicate that one. Yeah, they were going to duplicate that fence on that side. It's about a three foot tall fence. Now, did we already did we already approve something for this? In you while? guys did. You guys approved this exact fence on the neighbor uh, neighboring property to replicate on this property. But they didn't uh, do it. Okay. They just haven't done it. Okay. All right. Okay. And then we have a uh, one twenty Harvard Street. And approve re uh, replacement windows. So again, this is one that came before you guys uh, a few months back. Um, the property owner stated to the commission that he was out of town. His wife ordered the windows and without his knowledge. However, he came back and he actually installed the windows himself. But he's gone before the commission previously, so I'm not sure why he didn't understand that he needed to come before you guys before installing the, the windows, regardless of who purchased the windows. Um, <laughs> so okay. as you can see, they're, they're white windows with the, uh, the grids in between the glass, white vinyl windows with grids between the glass. And his original windows were a dark color, um, double hung window, uh, no grids at all. Right. And so he came before the commission a few months back and he did try to uh, remediate the windows. However, it was, it was denied by the commission. He, he tried to paint, he painted one particular window and he put an exterior grid also painted onto the, uh, onto the exterior of the glass, um, but the commission denied it. So okay. therefore his only recourse, I guess, is to replace the windows back to it, their original design. Or, or, or something, something, more, something more appropriate. Yeah. Okay. So is, are we expecting to hear from this person? So I sent him another letter stating, hey, you know, your, your, your petition was denied and we, uh, you know, it's been a few months now. We haven't heard back from you. So this is the stop work order still stands. So we need to hear back from you. Otherwise, uh, this is going to be sent to the to, to the law department. So that, okay. that's where it stands. So it's a matter of how you guys want to move forward. If you um, now, when was the last time we reached out to him? That must have been recently. Before the last meeting, I uh, sent the letter. The letter sent with return receipt, all that kind of stuff. I'm not sure if uh, attorney Shuchuk, have you heard from this particular property owner? So attorney Shuchuk, you know uh, no, I, no, I have not. Oh, there he is. No. Okay. Okay. Well, do we want to reach out one more time? That's, that's up to I, you guys. I would, I would, would prove that he received the letter. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it a certified mail return receipt requested um, okay. from the law department. Is that? 
Yeah, I'm good for that. Yep, I'd love that. Okay. All right. Do so you want to give them, let's say, thirty days to respond, or how how you guys? Yeah, thirty it? days to 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 thirty days you know, come before us with a plan or whatever. Thirty days, yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, Dartmouth Terrace, unapproved replacement of garage doors, replacement windows, and reorientation. Oh, that one's back. Okay. Has there been any motion movement? I know we sent letters and I think. So I've sent several stop work orders for each matter. Um, and so back in July, it was the, the commission decided to issue fines to the, uh, through the building department to the property owner. Okay. Uh, the property owner was fined in July. Um, however, I, it was supposed to be a monthly fine. However, they didn't find them uh, the subsequent month in, in August. Um, I did reach out to them uh, before the, uh, around the last meeting, and they stated that they would, uh, you know, re I guess reinvestigate the situation. But again, all the items still, you know, remain. Sure. Um, so just today, I got an email because I did you know, have another chat with the building department and state, stated, hey, you know, we have a meeting tonight. We want to kind of just know where's the status with this because, um, you know, they just never got back to me. Um, but I was told today that they would issue another fine. Okay. Well, there's nothing else we can do anyways. It's kind of in their hands. And um, I mean, we can encourage the law department to do something, but it sounds to me like we've done all we can on that one. Um, so again, I mean, there is the recourse to take these matters to court, but again, I'm not sure, you know, <laughs> right. Attorney Shuchuk can certainly give his opinion. I'm, I'm not sure with COVID and everything, how these things will get resolved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I get that. Um, well, I'll just find them. I'm okay with that too. Any other commissioners have any questions about these three non-compliance issues? Okay, good. And they only have one last thing on our agenda. And that's annually, we have to have elections of uh, chair and vice chair. And uh, I don't know what the other position is considered. And let me say what I've said just about every year when we get here. I am, you know, I do. If anybody else wants to step forward and potentially share chair, I'm just fine with that. Um, so we have not, four. I'm sorry, not to cut you off. We have four positions. So we have chair, vice chair, CPC representative, community preservation committee representative, and uh, secretary. Okay, so, but we have to do this. And, um, you know, I wish we had a couple more commissioners or one more, one or two more commissioners on. Um, and I always offer that it's not, you know, I'm, I'm a commissioner, whether I'm chairing or not, and I have no objection to somebody nominating somebody else. And it's, it's our right to, to move things around. Um, I will continue to chair if that's what you, you choose. But but believe me when I say I have no issue just being a commissioner. Um, so, and Alvin, what is it the position that we consider you for, or your position to be? I guess secretary or um, liaison to the historic. Commission. Well, let me make let me make a motion that we nominate Alvin Allen to continue as our liaison to the Spring Historic Commission. Second. Second. Any discussion on that? Let me just call the vote on that. Commissioner Wall certainly says yes. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner Finn? Absolutely, yes. And I just wrote next to this vote to keep Alvin. <laughs> um so that takes care of that now what's the other the, the other one starting at the bottom up see what you call it say uh, community 
Uh, uh, yes, Community Preservation Committee representative. And who is that right now? Is that Commissioner Finn? Commissioner Finn. How are you doing, Mr. Finn? I'm doing all right. Yeah. Is, do, there, um, any, is there any news for us? Yes, yes. And it's, it's bittersweet. So um, I haven't mentioned this to anybody, but I have decided to take a job promotion, uh, which is going to require a relocation to Nashville, Tennessee. And that is going to be happening fairly quickly. So uh, I am going to, I've just got to figure out a date when this will happen, but I'm going to have to both resign from the Historical Commission and subsequently the CPC. Okay. Um, I think they'd like me to be down there by January, if not uh, not too soon after. So okay. um, I'd like yeah. to move that we do not accept his resignation. <laughs> I'll second that motion. Yeah, thank you. But uh, yeah, so I don't, you know, I, I, I would stay on both uh, as long as I can. Um, but as it gets closer to that date, you know, we've got a lot to do to get our house ready for sale. And we've got to go down to Nashville and start looking where we want to end up. So wow. a lot going on. Well, let me suggest this, Commissioner Finn. All of we commissioners that have worked with you this period of time, I am just happy I had you this long. Congratulations you. on that job promotion. We Thank would you. love you to stay, participate in as many meetings as you feel like it. And if you can't, we completely understand it. And I just want to thank you personally for supporting the commission and, and being as dedicated as you are. Yeah. And that would make sense as to why you're getting promoted. Yeah, no, thank you. It's been a, it's been a pleasure actually serving on both the uh, historical commission as well as the CPC. Um, so we would, a lot. it's been a great rewarding experience, but at my age, when you're offered a job promotion, um, you either say <laughs> yes, or it's probably the last one you get. So it's, yeah, uh, I, I understand. Yeah. So completely. it's something you, you need to do. I understand completely. So what what uh, I would ask that you, when you talk to your organization, they need to put somebody forward as quickly as possible, I would imagine, to replace you. Right. So anyway, we would. That's that's the main thing I would ask for you. But congratulations and. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here all this time. Absolutely, you're very welcome. Here, okay. Now, anybody else? So, are, are you guys going to take a vote to keep uh, Mr. Finn on for a little, a little bit longer? Well, he doesn't. He's still. He, we don't have to vote to keep him on. We just he, when he resigns, he has to resign. I don't think we have to. You, oh, yeah, actually, do we do? Oh, you're saying technically we have to just to make sure we name them. Yeah, why don't we do that? And then we'll let we understand that if it's two weeks or two months that we get it. But yeah, I'd entertain a motion to, um, to, to can continue, have, have David continue in the representation that he is now. And I always forget what the initials are. That's why I'm not saying them. So moved. CPC, yep. CPC, not PCP. Not PCP, no. no. CPC. CPC. Yeah, okay. that, hasn't, that hasn't come up during any of the meetings. <laughs> Good thing. Okay, so we had a, a, a motion in a second, and uh, I'll start that as well. Commissioner Walsh votes yes. Com Commissioner Nardi? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Kroll? Yes. I'm going to imagine you're going to abstain, Commissioner Finn? Yes, I abstain. Okay. Well, you, you've just been voted to hang around as long as you can. And, you know, we'd love to see you a couple more times. And it just make sure you let us know when you're close to on the way out. So I can buy you a beer somewhere or something like that. <laughs> we'll do. Absolutely. I don't drink, but I'll buy you one either way. Okay, now that leaves chair and vice chair. So I'm going to keep quiet. You guys can do the talking now. We have a, a hand raised. Who's got a, who's got a hand raised? Oh, Commissioner Nardi, go ahead. I would like to nominate uh, Brian for vice chairman. Uh, 
I think he, I think he fainted. He fainted. I think he did. Yeah. I think he fainted. We need a second. Well, we don't have a second yet. Brian, would you like to comment? I'll second it if that's what he wants. Well, there's a second right there. Now we've, well, since we have a, a motion and a second, we have discussion. Brian, tell us what you're thinking. I'm thinking that your uh, attendance be, better be very good because uh, my Robert's Rules of Orders aren't all that great. Um, well, I know what I'm thinking. I'm thinking Al makes a much better second than I do. Yeah. Well, the good part for me is I've never ever been to a meeting that anybody's chaired besides myself and Ralph. So I don't know how Al chairs. I might nominate him otherwise. But um, I usually give out free pizza. That's why he's saying that. Uh, I mean, are you willing, Brian, if you were voted in? And, and is and let me ask Al: Is there anybody? Anybody jump in there? I mean, I want it to be. If, if Al doesn't want to do it, but I think Al is a much better um, substitute chair than I would be. I, I would continue. Seeing to him in his inaction plenty of times, he is a very, very good chair. I, I would continue to do it if that's what you wish. Okay. Well, if that were the case, you might withdraw your motion. Someone else can make a motion. To okay, I, I officially withdraw the emotion. Okay. The, I'm a, I'll make a motion that Al Nardi becomes the uh, vice chair of the. Uh, Can I get a second on that motion? Okay. Any discussion? Second. Thank you, Bill. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. You're okay with that, Al? Uh? Yes. Okay. Let me call a vote on the, on the vice chair. Uh, and uh, Commissioner Walsh says yes. Commissioner Nardi, abstain. With point abstain. Commissioner Duquette, yes. Commissioner McFarland, Sporley. yes. yes. Yeah. Commissioner Kroll, yes. Commissioner yes. Finn, very close with yes. Yes. okay. Is that Commissioner Suchuk making? I mean, uh, Commissioner Suchuk making all that noise. Okay, that leaves the chair. I can't what that say. Is that a motion, Al? Is that a yard sign? I have no, <laughs> I have no, <laughs> oh, I'll, uh, I'll make a motion for uh, unless do I second the visual motion that's being presented? Well, that's a that, that's motion back and forth for sure. Um, no, I'm willing, Don't move. but I, I just want everybody to know that it's not an issue to me to not be. If someone wanted to try it or be it, it's okay. You know, it doesn't. You know. I've chaired right. a lot of different committees over the years, and it, it's uh, in in business and and elsewhere, and, and it's. It's fun well, to do. I, I don't mind doing it, but it's okay if anybody else wants to step up. But there's a motion to continue for me to continue as chair. Is there any more discussion on that motion? Well, I think you don't you, you don't fix it if it's well. not broken. Right. <laughs> well, I, gotta I agree. That. There's a few people that might consider it partially uh, in, injured every now and then. Uh, but if any other discussion, mm -hmm. all right. Let me call the vote. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Crawl? Yes. And Commissioner Finn? Yes. Okay. Well, that takes care of our obligation to set our, our uh, positions for the next year. And um, other than that, is there anything else that uh, anybody Put properly before the commission tonight. Attorney Shootshock, is there anything we need to know from you? No, oh, no, I'm just on a broken computer. But other than that, <laughs> okay. But we're all good then. I didn't yeah, you guys motion. are good. Good, thank you. I entertain the motion to adjourn. Second, second motion. Second. All right, thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, guys, thank you very much.
Good night, Thank everyone. You. Thank you. Bye -bye. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.